the holidays are coming, so I thought, why not make a unholy Christmas mini diorama? So, Archvillain Games make these 3D printable figures, and if you're subscribed to their Patreon, every month you get 3D printable figures you can print yourself in how many copies you want. They reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to do a build for their Unholy Knights, and freak yeah, <laughs> I wanted to. Like, some of these are just amazing. Krampus, you have the Workshop golems, you have some really cool looking trolls, yak folk. And I just had this idea when I saw these two sculpts that I just wanted to see if I could make something with. And my Frozen Sonic Mini 4K just finished printing the minis. So let's go check them out and I'll tell you about the idea I had. Prints came out amazingly. They seem to be all perfect. <laughs> Thank God for pre-support. But the idea that I had is because this yak person is kind of leaning his head on his uh, hand. It looks like he's thinking and kind of considering his life choices that led him up to this point. And the other one is this crazy goblin that is riding some form of reindeer. It's looking amazing. So I had this idea of creating like a snow scene, Christmas scene in true Christmas spirit and having this wise old yak or cow thing kind of be the teacher for this goblin training to become a high jump master. So I'm gonna clean these up and then I think we'll start with the painting and then we'll do the building. I always start my miniature painting with base coating the whole miniature. I've added all of the colors that I need on the palette to get started. I'm then slapping colors on like a crazy person using an old nylon brush so I don't have to be careful about breaking my expensive brushes. On the bottom of this reindeer animal thing I'm adding a lot of blues to kind of get this feeling of the cold snow reflecting light upwards. For the base coats I tend to go with quite a dark shadowy tone for most of the colors when I paint. And having a sheet brush and having different paints ready makes it so that I can do a wet blend, meaning that I can add more colors while the first ones still haven't dried. And this just blends everything together creating these really nice transitions. There's a few colors that I tend to not base coat with a dark tone and one of those is red. On this yak person I'm base coating the coat with a Mephiston red and this red will just complement perfectly towards the blue-green snow that we're gonna add later. The fur is painted with Vallejo scale color black and the skin around the hand and the face area is painted with Bugman's glow. To highlight the reds on the cloak I'm just adding a bit of white to the palette and then gradually adding more and more white to the red mix creating these really nice reddish highlights. And highlighting red doesn't have to be hard. Just remember to leave the largest area still red and then just add a small area of white highlighted. Even though the fur is going to be black we kind of want to have a little bit of a brown shimmer to it. So we're adding the color Doombull Brown to the highlights, as well as a little bit of sunny skin tone as a final sort of punch to make it pop a bit. It still reads as a dark black brownish kind of fur, but it's not a flat black. Sorry about the out of focus shots for a few seconds, but to highlight the skin I'm just adding sunny skin tone to the Bugman's glow, mixing in more and more the brighter the highlight that I want to have. And then of course doing the same thing with the face. The leather is highlighted in four different steps, starting with a base coat of Rhinox Hide, highlighting it up about 50% of the area with Doombull Brown. I'm then going in with about 40% of these areas with Deathclaw Brown and then finally punching the highlights with Sunny Skin Tone, maybe around 10% of the area. 
my absolute favorite metal color is Vallejo Liquid Gold. But because it's alcohol based I can't use it on the wet palette. So I'm covering all of the metallic parts and golden parts with gold on the jacket least and that is enough to just make it look amazing. I'm not gonna shade it in any way, that's gonna be enough for today. I wanted to have a really vibrant goblin skin tone. So I start by highlighting it using Moot Green and for the final highlights I'm adding a little bit of Dorn Yellow. If you want to punch it a little bit more you can also glaze in a little bit of Flash Gits Yellow that will just make everything pop so much. The horns were base coated with Rhinoxide and I'm adding the first highlight layer using Scrofulous Brown from Vallejo. To punch the highlights on the horns I'm mixing in ivory to the scrofulous brown on the wet palette. Using the shapes of the horns and highlighting the deepest areas and the most raised areas of the horn it really gives me a natural sort of reflection of the horns. And with this it's up to you how much you want to punch it. I'm adding quite a lot of ivory and for every layer I add I just use a smaller and smaller surface. And most of the areas can be highlighted mixing the base coat that we had and just mixing in some ivory or a bit of white. It's really simple and very effective. The wet palette is just a dream to use for this type of work. Since the inside of the ears of the reindeer were base coated with a red, we're highlighting it with sort of Caucasian skin tones, starting with Bugman's Glow and then adding Sunny Skin Tone, mixing in more and more to the Bugman's Glow the further we want to go with the highlight. The fur is highlighted in three different steps. The base coat we had was Mournfang Brown. We're then adding Deathclaw Brown and then to that Deathclaw Brown, we're punching in a little bit of ivory. Again, remember, every time you add a highlight, add the highlight to a smaller surface, you're going to get really smooth transitions and it's going to create a really nice volume. I placed the highlight so that the brightest point is the one facing towards the sky. It's now time to highlight some of the details. The different wood parts and rope parts and leathery parts are all painted with different types of brown. Some of them are a bit more on the gray side, others are more on the yellow and others are more on the red. This gives me a nice separation even though they're all in the brown spectrum. We've got two things left to paint. We're gonna start off with all of the metallic parts. I'm using Vallejo Metal Color, Gunmetal Gray and Silver. Base coating it with the Gunmetal Color and then highlighting it with Silver. The last thing to highlight is the eyes. A Vallejo Fluorescent Color for the eyes. Orange on the Goblin to complement the green and on the creature we're going to use a green And with that I felt almost done, but I still felt like there was something missing in the shadows. So I added some Screamer Pink to the wet palette, it's sort of a purple tone. Thinned it down so it was almost like a wash and just added that into all of the different shadowy areas underneath the miniatures. This really added a cold feel to both of the miniatures and I think it will tie together with the scene better. Let's start building the base. So the idea is to create this horse jumping barrier on one side and on the other we're going to have the jack sitting on a hill looking down on this goblin feeling disappointed. And where this reindeer is gonna land there's going to be this sort of icy lake and that one is going to crack and the goblin is going to fall down the ice into the water. So I'm creating the foundation using a cork coaster. And the same thing for the little hill, but I'm also using cork bark to create the rocky parts. Since we're going to use resin later to create the ice lake, it's important that the cork coaster is completely sealed so we don't have any resin leaking anywhere else. I'm using chopsticks to create the barrier that the reindeer is going to jump over. I'm using the knife to create more natural patterns and shapes of it so it doesn't look as machine made as it looks right now. I'm then carving the top of these to make sure that I easily can just lean in a small stick that will work as sort of the top of the barrier. I 
And for that one, I'm using just a regular toothpick and doing the same thing, carving it a bit so it looks a bit less machine made. I'm using Geek Gaming's modeling compound to create the shape of the environment. This is such a great fast drying tool that just helps me create the environments and the shapes of the hills and everything in a matter of minutes. And when it's dried, it's time to prime it and then paint it. Okay, so before we start painting the base, I thought it's a good idea to talk about Arch Villain Games who makes the miniatures that I'm painting today. They make some of the most stunning miniatures for home 3D printing. Always incredibly detailed and packed with personality. I don't think you need convincing, just look at these renders. <laughs> Cause I mean, who doesn't need a goblin with a frying pan riding this freaking whatever it is, and like a whole set of Krampus miniatures. All of the models are available through a monthly patron, and their theme for December is Unholy Nights, as you already know. And it's loaded with more than 20 models, and all of them have the option of being pre-supported, so you can just slap them on the printer the minute you downloaded them. And a kid you not, for me, this is a must, and it helps so much in the process of enjoying and printing miniatures. A $10 pledge gives you access to all of these miniatures, and it also opens up the Sinister Vault with a large depository of models that keeps growing every month. But if you're into D&D, you can also upgrade this pledge to $13.99 a month and get access to a 5th edition module that's modeled around the monthly theme that you have and all of the miniatures that's included in that. And if any of this sounds the least interesting to you, you can support me as a creator and them as a producer by checking out the link in the video description. Because we're going to add snow effects to most of the base, we don't have to be very careful when painting the base colors of the base. I'm adding dark sea blue, glacier blue, green blue, soda green and the purple color again to the wet palette so I can just slap the colors on there before anything dries, just blend everything together. The only thing that I'm a bit careful about is to make sure that the center of this sort of ice area is well highlighted. Okay, so it's time to create the cracked ice where the stag is gonna land here in the center of the little pool. We're going to do a little trick that I learned from Marco Frisoni. This is a broken plastic screen from an IKEA picture frame. I'm cutting four different circles in the shape of the pond that we have and then just start breaking them into even smaller bits. With these tiny bits I'm then puzzling together and creating four different layers to get a good depth of this cracked ice and just gluing them together with super glue. I'm using Green Stuff World UV resin to create the surface of the eyes. But you can pretty much use any two component resin or transparent resin that you've got available. I'm cutting a few pieces of fishing line to add between the different cracked ice bits to create water splashes. I'm gluing this in place using the UV resin as a glue, as well as adding a few tiny bits of this cracked plastic to be smaller bits of broken ice. I'm also gluing a few very very tiny bits on these fishing lines, again using the UV resin that will create small ice bits flying away from the impact. The snow is created using PVA glue as well as some snow flock powder. The one I have is from Green Stuff World, but I'm sure that pretty much any brand works. At first I'm mixing the glue together with some of this fine powder. I place all of this on the base and as a final touch I'm just sprinkling this fine powder on top of the glue and powder mix. This creates a sort of frosty finish to the whole surface and everything just looks like a glimmering icy landscape. In retrospect I should have covered up the icy patch because the snow just fell everywhere and it was almost impossible to get rid of. And it really dulled down the ice. So to make it pop again, I used some turquoise ink and just glazed that all over. To finish everything up, I just created a nice edge highlight, painting with some white on all of the ice edges. And with that, we have a really amazing base.
All I have to do now is to glue the final miniature in place. And it's time for a grand reveal. So friends, that's it for today. These miniatures from Archvillain Games just had so much character. So check out their link in the video description if you want these awesome minis. If you'd like to support this channel, you can check out my Patreon. It's a big part of why I'm able to run this channel monthly and make these videos for you guys and help inspire you guys. And a few dollars goes a really long way for me. So I'm really thankful to all of you top supporters and donors that's been pledging for over a year now since I started the Patreon. Thank you so much. If you wonder about any of the tools that I use, I have affiliate links on my website, well as in the video description. So if you wonder about any of the stuff that I use, like the brushes, the airbrush, the cameras, the lamps, whatever, it's all listed there. And with that said, friends, have a great day. Bye-bye.